Hi, my name is Rochelle. I take found and thrifted items and then fix them up and sell them for a profit. Whether you're looking to start a side hustle or if you're just wanting to furnish your house on a budget, in these videos, I show you tips and tricks on how to do the exact same thing. So this week I have a hot mess on my hands. I got two pieces from Facebook Marketplace a few weeks back. I had to take the first piece and then pick up the next one a few days later. In the meantime, this piece just sat in the rain with a sheet over the top. So when I picked it up, the top was already severely water damaged. I should have said something, I know, but on this particular day, I was just not in the mood. So here I stand with a water damaged piece, but I can save it, I think. So let's dive right in. So I'm off to a great start here. The drawer will not come out. In the end, it turned out that the drawer runner has a built-in drawer stop, which I've actually never seen before. So you learn something new every day. First, I start by sanding down a section of the most severely water damaged veneer. I'm looking for two things. Has the veneer glue been compromised under the majority of the veneer? This will mean pulling up all of the veneer over the entire top. And two, has the water damage seeped down into the particle board and caused swelling? This will mean I'm not sure because I've never done it before. I just have a feeling it'll be a lot of work and a lot of research. I'm so pleasantly surprised. There are spots where I need to pull up the veneer and patch, but I see no need to pull everything up and no swelling. So I set to work sanding down the rest of the top with 150 grit sandpaper to remove all of the failing finish and to smooth out the places where the moisture raised the texture. When it comes to pulling a veneer with failing glue, I'm not gentle. I want to find these spots now and not later after I've applied my nice clean finish. So I poke and scrape and peel away any veneer that's not holding on for dear life. Next, I used bonded fill all the areas where I peeled up the veneer. I ran out of plates and decided that foil was the next best option. It was not, I'm not gonna make you watch me struggle here. I made a mess. <laughs> I then let that dry for several hours. I can already tell that I'm gonna to need to do a second pass on some areas with rough coverage. Uh, that is after I get the first layer sanded down. While that last layer of Bondo dries, I give the rest of the piece a good scuff sanding, fully removing the finish anywhere that it's failing. This hardware is not doing anything for this piece, so I have some new modern hardware in order that I think will add a lot of interest. Now that we're all patched and sanded, I give this thing a good vacuum and degrease from top to bottom with a TSP alternative. I've opened wood pores like this. I like to ensure that I wipe away the TSPA with warm water and then wipe that dry with a cloth. 
I want this water to dry and evaporate as quickly as possible so that no wood fibers start to raise up. The new hardware is here, I love it. I think this is gonna look amazing with the bold summery color that I've chosen. I use the existing hardware holes as my guide and quickly drill new holes and test that everything is level. I then tape up the hinges to protect them while I prime. This is one of those instances where I know for sure that I need to prime. I had water damage, places with open wood pores, and then there's still old finish there. I want to seal this thing up tight and give my paint a single substrate to adhere to. Today I'm using Press Fern by Fusion Mineral Paint. I can't wait to see it with this new hardware. I'm using my HVLP Gravity Fed spray gun to apply my paint. I know it can seem a little intimidating. I have a video introducing you to my gun setup. I'll link it in the description box below. And as always, please ask any questions that you have in the comments section. I answer every single last one of them. I'll admit this first coat was a little jarring, but I've seen other people use this color and it deepens to a gorgeous emerald with an additional coat and as it dries. You just gotta trust the process, I guess. <laughs> Between each layer of primer, paint, and top coat, I use a 220 grit sanding pad to smooth out the texture. I think these are technically used for wet sanding, but it works really, really great for this application. Just make sure to wipe away your sanding dust afterwards. Dust, or in this case a cottonwood seed, falling into your finish is sometimes inevitable. The best thing to do is just to let it dry completely, then come back and sand it away, and then add on a whole other coat of paint. I ended up doing three thin coats of paint to give coverage I wanted with this paint. I then came back with polyurethane and a satin finish to top coat. And now for the final touches. I ended up hating the color of the hinges with the new hardware, so I wrapped up each side of the buffet to spray paint them a champagne gold color. I made sure to let my paint cure overnight before putting any tape on it. I'll also be really gentle while removing it. Also, when it comes to spray paint, just assume that it's gonna go everywhere. Just cover up every inch of surface that you don't want to get dusted. Let me remind you of what this piece looked like before. It had pretty gnarly water damage and zero personality. And this is what it looks like all fixed up. Thank you guys so much for following along with me on this project. I got this piece for $75. The hardware was $10. The paint was $25. So all in, I'm at $110. I plan on posting this for $375, and I'm pretty confident that I can sell it for that here in Denver. Love taking pieces that are truly headed for the landfill and giving them new life and many, many more years. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this transformation and also hearing about the ways that you personally like to contend with water damage. I'll see you guys back here next week for another transformation from the Rummage Workshop. Bye.